Attorney Scott, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Let me begin the story of this tragedy. As most of you are aware, through the news or personal experience, our community, Portsmouth and Soda County, has been and still is ground zero for this terrible drug problem. We hear regularly about overdoses and crime directly related to crimes directly related to drugs. It has taken a foothold here and has devastated our friends, our family, and our whole community. It is no respecter of age, status, or wealth. This scourge of our modern society turns spouses against spouses, siblings against siblings, grandparents against grandchildren, and breaks the bonds of family. Grandparents are raising grandchildren, and in some cases, great-grandparents are raising great-grandchildren. There are so many people trying to reverse and correct this problem. There has been this upswell in our community of people that have said enough is enough. We're going to change and come back. We will win this fight, make our home a better place. But the first step in winning this fight is for individuals that have been led down this path to take personal responsibility for their crimes and their sins. And that starts right here, right now. My client, Jessica Groves, was and still is a drug addict. There is no doubt about that fact. She and she alone caused the injuries to Dylan Groves, which led to his death. She murdered Dylan Groves. She will testify that she murdered Dylan Groves. She will testify to the injuries that she caused to Dylan Groves. The two-inch fracture on the skull, the one-inch fracture on the skull, the half-inch laceration on the left arm, fracture of the left humerus, fracture of the left radius and ulna, red contusion on the right side of the chest, healed rib fractures, and the drugs in baby Dylan's system. These are the injuries caused to Dylan Groves by Jessica Groves. Finally, you might ask, why put everybody through this ordeal? Why put everybody through this trauma? The answer is because she's going to do the right thing right now. And that right thing is to take personal responsibility for her crimes and sins. And that right thing also is to protect and defend an innocent man. Daniel Groves had nothing to do with the death of Daniel Groves had nothing to do with the death of Dylan Groves and did not cause these injuries. He was foolishly unaware of these injuries. And I say foolishly because hindsight's always 2020. And sometimes you're oblivious to what's going on. This is especially true for someone you have known for 20 years and that you have loved. Dylan Groves died on March 28th, and Daniel found him unresponsive. Once he found him, panic and confusion set in. And with that panic and confusion came poor decisions. That leads us all to here today. Did he help hide the body? Yes. Did he suggest the well? Yes, he knew where this well was. Did he help craft a coffin and preserve Dylan? Yes, he did. But that is all he did. Jessica Groves is the person responsible for the death of Dylan Groves. She is here in front of you today, taking personal responsibility for her crimes and her sins. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Scott, you may address the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, good morning. And um, as Ms. Hutchinson um, spoke to you all today, we definitely thank you for your uh, service here in this matter, um, your time and attention in this matter. 
And as I talked to you a little bit yesterday, what I believe is an honor to participate in this system that is very unique to our country. And uh, we do appreciate um, the full attention that I know that you will give to the seriousness of this case. And obviously, it's a very upsetting topic um, and very um, disturbing topic that we do um, and that Ms. Hutchison has already apologized to you that we're going to have to discuss with you all over the next several days. Um, I'm not sure if you were expecting to hear um, what Mr. Stratton has already spoken to you about, um, but obviously, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would argue and support that position in this matter that Ms. Groves is the principal perpetrator in this matter. And that is in a position that has actually been held by the state in this case since this case was arraigned right here in this courtroom. In fact, Ms. Hutchinson um, actually called Jessica Groves. Objection, Your Honor. Okay, we have an objection during the opening statement from the defense. Um, Judge Phyllis Collins and attorney Robert James are with me in studio here. Uh, while they're at sidebar, I want to get your reaction to something that we just saw, basically a defense opening statement saying, my client did it, uh, and her husband um, only helped with um, the after situation. Of, of the, uh, this was extraordinary. Um, your, your, your initial thoughts on this? Yeah, I think we were all shocked by that. Um, it's not something that you see often. Usually they're pointing the finger at each other. Sometimes it's severed, and so it's separate trials. Um, and a lot of times the investigators don't know exactly who did it. Um, so it's a good defense strategy. So this is different. But um, I get it now. Now I understand why I guess we're having a trial. This sounds like, you know, this woman, um, Jessica Groves, is taking responsibility and wants to do it in this fashion to try to help her husband, I guess, get some freedom. Well, if you're him, you know, it, it's great, right? Yeah. You know, she's going to testify and presumably exonerate him. So I think a lot rides or depends on how effective her testimony is and also what circumstantial evidence they have to prove that he, in fact, knew about the abuse. Right. Um, and, and it changes um, everything. Well, let's go back into the courtroom. The sidebar uh, has broken up. Following the evidence in this case. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, even the state in this case and Ms. Hutchinson, as far as that arraignment in this matter, um, when this case was right here in this court for the very first time, actually labeled Ms. Groves principal perpetrator. That will be the position that Mr. Groves will hold. That is the position that actually Jessica Groves is going to own in this matter, as you've heard from the opening statement. Um, you also heard Mr. Tiemann yesterday in uh, his void dire um, and, and questioning of the jury. He said that they have the burden, they have the standard that they have to prove, and I will ask you that you hold them to that standard for each and every case, each and every charge in this matter. Um, they are the ones that have to prove each and every element. They have to provide you evidence, facts that support each and every one of those uh, charges that my client is facing before you, and I would ask that you hold them to that burden, hold them to that standard. Hold them to that beyond a reasonable doubt that he spoke to you about yesterday that the judge is going to fully instruct you on. Um, we are going to ask that you make sure prior to rendering your verdict that you either have the facts that support that case or you do not have the facts to support that case and you weigh that against beyond a reasonable doubt. We would ask that you would listen to all the evidence, listen to all the testimony before you make up your mind in this case. And I'm sure. This case is going to be a very emotional, this is going to be very taxing, and it's going to anger you. Um, if it doesn't, I'll be very surprised. Um, but I want to ask you and to remind you to render a fair and a just verdict here, one that matches the law that you will be instructed on. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you heard my co-counsel in this matter, the uh, Mr. Stratton, who's representing um, Mrs. Groves, um, talk about how my client participated 
in um, helping her dispose the body. You heard Ms. Hutchinson get up here and tell you um, that my client actually, um, after um, some misconception, that he did lead the uh, law enforcement agency uh, to the recovery of Dylan's body. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. He only helped dispose of the body. He did eventually cooperate with the police because he couldn't lie about it anymore. And I believe that you will hear uh, law enforcement come in and talk to you about that. He led them to where Dylan had been placed. He did not cause the, his death. He never kidnapped him. He never caused his death. He never endangered him. He never interfered with custody. He never caused harm to this child. He cannot be the source of uh, felonious assault that he has also been charged with. And that's what I want you to listen for. Either that's going to be proven or not proven throughout this case. And it is our position that that will not be proven by the state. That will be accounted for by the actions of Jessica Groves. And she is going to own all of those actions. And she will tell you in her own words, or we anticipate her telling you in her own words, how, whether you call it my client was blind, whether you call it that he was foolishly unaware, as Mr. Stratton pointed out, he may have been, ladies and gentlemen, but he had no knowledge. He had no participation. And he was not the source of the injuries that resulted in Dylan's death. Once again, listen to all of the evidence. Listen to the testimony before coming to your conclusion and render a fair and just verdict in this matter. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Scott.